Good morning. morning. I have several announcements this morning. Um, my My daughter is a graduate of the University of Kentucky. And we got a phone call over the week, last week, from the University of Kentucky from a young co-ed asking us to support something called Dance Blue. Dance Blue is a 15-year-old project at the University of Kentucky where people, students dance for 24 hours in the old, amp- in the old basketball arena to raise money for the Children's Cancer Unit at the University of Kentucky. They've been doing it for 15 years. They've raised $19 million. They're aiming for $2 million this time. Uh, our daughter did it, and I think she collapsed both times. After You can't sit down or lay down for 24 hours. You can go to the bathroom. You can have snacks and all of that. But these kids dance to support kids with cancer. Um, so there is very good news in the world that they really care about people they don't know. Uh, Maundy Thursday, senior member lin- luncheon. Let me remind you, you have to call in. Uh, you have to do it by Palm Sunday, which is next Sunday. The Mondovi sharing table is April 12th. Uh, the council had a special meeting last Wednesday and has tabled the vote on the marriage statement until the new pastor arrives. So we have one vote next Sunday following worship. That vote will be for those who will be on the call committee. You can nominate from the floor in addition to the people that will be presented. All that's required to be on the call committee is to be a confirmed member of the church. So none of my catechism kids can do it. But anybody that's confirmed is eligible. And I also shared with you that um, I've been having to help out at my previous interim church. I told you that their pastor died about four months after they called him, after I left. They still do not have a pastor or an interim, so their council asked me to call weekly to two of their members who are in stage four cancer, which I've been doing, and then one of them last week went into hospice. And they asked me to bring communion to him and his family last Monday. I did so. He died Thursday morning. Our council's given me permission to do the funeral on any day except Wednesday or Sunday, so I will be leaving here this Friday, going home to Northfield, and then going to La Center for a funeral on Saturday morning, and then coming back. And I thank our council for the willingness to help out. You understand how challenging it is when you don't have an interim, and you don't have a regular pastor. And then add the trauma of their pastor dying of a heart attack on a Saturday night before the Sunday service. So if you want to keep... uh, St. Paul Lutheran Church in La Center in your prayers, please do so. Are there any other announcements? We have First Communion class, the last one this morning after church. Uh, They will be receiving First Communion next Sunday, so they and their families will come down first for Communion. We also, for anybody that cannot make it next Sunday, uh, they're allowed to take their first communion on Monday, Thursday. Once again, we'll allow them to come down first. So uh, be very proud. I think we have 13 or 14 of them. One from uh, Modena is with us for classes for first communion. Let us begin with confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who makes all things new, whose mercy endures forever. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Gracious God, God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin, and made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. 
Our opening song is Oh for a Thousand Tongues to Sing, verses 1 through 3. I forgot one question. We're discussing whether or not to have Wednesday evening services during the summer. Uh, obviously, we have time to think about that. We sent out a survey and got very few responses. How many people here now would come to a Wednesday evening service during the summer on a regular basis? Obviously, I would. Okay, I see one, two, three, four, five hands. Six hands. Randy's seven. Okay, thank you very much. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also, and also with you. Let us pray. Bend your ear to our prayers, Lord Christ, and come among us. By your gracious life and death for us, bring light into the darkness of our hearts and anoint us with your spirit. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. If there are any youth who would like to come forward for a children's talk, please do so. There you go. Boy, you're fast. I make the mistake sometimes of not looking behind me. Good morning. How are y'all doing? Well, today we're going to talk about a journey. Jesus has been on a journey the last several weeks on his way to Jerusalem. He's almost there, we'll hear in the story today. And then next Sunday, we have what's called Palm Sunday. You may not remember that from last year. We have a bunch of palm leaves and we wave them. I served a church as an intern, an inner city church in Philadelphia. And on Palm Sunday, we would go out and march around the block with our palm leaves and our banners and our singing. Some of the neighbors didn't seem to appreciate it, but we wanted to let them know that Jesus was with them. So have y'all been on journeys anywhere? Do you go on vacation anywhere? Is it good to get there? Well, next Sunday, Jesus will go into Jerusalem, and there will be palm branches waving, and people will be so happy he's there. Now, you can't read it, but this is an unusual medallion I'm wearing. It says right along here, pilgrim. A pilgrim is somebody who's on a journey. On the back side, you have to look real close. Do you see the little thing at the top right there? What does it look like? A seashell? Yeah, it's a seashell because it reminds me that my journey began with baptism. Because when we baptize people, I take a seashell, and that's the baptismal font over there, 
and I dip it in that water, and I pour it on your head in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So my journey began with baptism like yours, and Jesus' journey ends on his way to Jerusalem next week with all that wonderful excitement. Do you get excited when you get where you're going on the journey? Well, all the people do next Sunday too. Okay, can we pray? Dear Lord, we give you thanks for loving us and baptizing us. In your name we pray. Amen. They remember more words than more bride and grooms when I'm doing a wedding, when I'm doing the wedding promises. I've had to stop, drop that down to three or four words for them. Maybe they're more nervous. Could be, huh? A reading from Ezekiel. The hand of the Lord came upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me all around them. There were very many lying in the valley, and they were very dry. He said to me, Mortal, can these bones live? I answered, O oh Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, O oh, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you, and you will cause flesh to come upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded, and as I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked, and there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, Prophesy to the breath, prophesy, mortal, and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood on their feet, a vast multitude. Then he said to me, Mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say, Our bones are dried up, and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people, and I will bring you back to the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people. I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live, and I will place you on your own soil. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. We will read the psalm responsively. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. O Lord, If you were to keep watch over sins, O Lord, who could stand? I wait for you, O Lord. My soul waits in your word is my hope. O oh, Israel, wait for the Lord, for with the Lord there is steadfast love. With the Lord there is plenteous redemption. For the Lord shall redeem Israel from all their sins. A reading from Romans. To set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the spirit is life and peace. For this reason, the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot, and those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh, you are in the Spirit, since the Spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of sin, 
the Spirit is life because of righteousness. If the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies, also through his Spirit that dwells in you. The word of the Lord. Please stand as we sing the acclamation as printed on the screen. The Gospel of going to St. John, the 11th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. This is a long reading. If some of you aren't able to stand for all of it, please be seated. Now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Mary was the one who anointed the Lord with perfume and wiped his feet with her hair. Her brother Lazarus was ill. So the sisters sent a message to Jesus, Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, This illness does not lead to death, rather it is for God's glory, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Accordingly, though Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, after her hearing that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to the disciples, Let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now trying to stone you, and are you going there again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours of daylight? Those who walk during the day do not stumble because they see the light of the world. But those who walk at night stumble because the light is not in them. After saying them, he told them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to waken him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he's fallen asleep, he'll be all right. Jesus, however, had been speaking about his death, but they thought he was referring merely to sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. For your sake I was glad I was not there, so that you may believe. But let us go to him. Thomas, who was called the twin, said to the fellow disciples, Let us go also, that we may die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away, and many of the Jews who had come to Mary and Martha to console them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him while Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord. I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. When she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary and told her privately, The teacher is here and is calling for you. And when she heard it, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come to the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. The Jews who were with her in the house, consoling her, saw Mary get up quickly and go out. They followed her because they thought she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb it was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench, because he's been dead four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? 
So they took away the stone, and Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I've said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so they may believe you sent me. When he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth, and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. Many of the Jews, therefore, had come after with Mary and had seen what Jesus did, believed in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. As I was listening to the first lesson being read when I was serving my internship church in Philadelphia, I preached on that one, the first lesson, the dry bones. And the floor in the church wasn't tile like this, it was all carpet. And I had a box on the pulpit. It was a box of calf bones, dry. And I said, what they're talking about here is this. And I took them and I dumped them on the floor and the dust rose up. Well, that did not go over well with the janitor and the women of the church. But I made the point that when they said they're going to bring life back to these bones, these are the dead bones they're talking about. And this is what God can do. In the story today, as I talked about our, to our youth, Jesus for the last several weeks has been on a journey. He set his face toward Jerusalem and he'll be there next week. Mary and Martha and Lazarus are his good friends. We need to remember that Jesus is God and human. And there is nowhere except maybe at the end when he commends his mother's care to the beloved disciple that Jesus shows his human side so much. Jesus knows that Lazarus is going to die, but he wants his glory to be shown and the glory of God to be shown. And so he hesitates. And they go there. And Mary and Martha are crying. And it says in here what used to be a wonderful quiz question when you had Bible studies. What is the shortest verse in the Bible? And it used to say, Jesus wept. It says now, Jesus began to cry. So Jesus shows his human side. He shows how much other human individuals mean to him, how much friends mean to him as they do to us. And Mary and Martha both say to him, if you'd have been here, it wouldn't have happened. And he says, do you believe? And he says, I am. Well, what matters about that? I am the resurrection and the life. Every Sunday, with the miracles we've been having, he has talked about I am statements because Jesus from the woman at the well with the living water that he offers her has been working on what his identity is, who he is to teach the disciples and the crowds. I am the resurrection and the life. Even though those who believe in me, even though they die, will live and everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? And they say yes. And so we've established these last several weeks on the road to Jerusalem who Jesus is and what he's about. Now, notice that he involves the crowd. He says, move the stone away, and then he says, unbind him and let him go. Don't just sit there. Take place in this miracle. Be doing something in this miracle. And so Jesus brings Lazarus after four days back to life. Now, you would think that would really give joy. Well, some of the Pharisees and Sadducees who were there, it's not, it'll be in the next few lines that aren't here, decided this day that he had to die. We can't let these usurpers go around raising people from the dead. You know, you, they might have thought, who is this person that raises people from the dead? And maybe we ought to find out more about that. But they made the decision this day that Jesus has committed the greatest sin. He's brought somebody back from the dead. It didn't occur to them that maybe only God could do that. But today is meant to be reassuring to us too. Jesus says Lazarus will die again. But his sisters know, as we know, that he'll be raised on the last day. Jesus has made this journey of these many weeks to do miracles. Does anybody remember what the first public miracle of Jesus was? First public miracle. 
water into wine at the wedding at Cana, so that they might have joy. And so we began with changing something like 60 gallons of water into wine, and we end with raising Lazarus from the dead. I don't know, I find those two strange bookends to telling us who Jesus is. But it reminds us that Jesus had a purpose for coming and that Jesus has said who I am. Next Sunday, we'll have Passion Palm Sunday. We call it Passion Palm because we make, we're going to read the readings for all the week because a lot of people don't come during Holy Week. And to go straight from Palm Sunday to Easter Sunday is kind of strange because Jesus never dies. And so next Sunday, we celebrate joyfully walking into Jerusalem with the palms and praising him. And at the end of it, Good Friday. In the midst of all of that, Jesus still reminds us who he is. The cross I'm wearing, as I talk to the kids about, says pilgrim on it. And on the back has a seashell to remind us where our journey begins. On the front is a small Jerusalem cross, which is a cross in the center and then a cross in each arm, to remind us where we end. Through the cross of Jesus Christ, we, like Lazarus, will end with Jesus. May God bless you this day, and may God be with you on your journey. And may you be as bold to care for others as the students at the University of Kentucky are with Go Jet Blue, Dance Blue, and raise money, do good deeds for others. For Christ, through his death and resurrection, has set you free to love your neighbor. Amen.
Let us confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Almighty creator of heaven, heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Sustained by God's abundant mercy, let us pray for the church, the world, and all of creation. You have breathed into us the breath of life. Enliven your church, deepen our partnerships with our companion churches around the globe, and bless the work of missionaries to accompany them. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Your spirit brings life to creation. Enliven the natural world and restore ecosystems in need of healing. Uplift prophetic voices that turn us to the needs of the soil beneath our feet and the air around us. Merciful God. You redeem the world and its peoples, free us from systems of oppression, unbind nations and societies from sins of racism, sexism, and homophobia. Raise up leaders at all levels of government who work to promote the dignity of every human life. Merciful God. You weep when we weep. Be present with those who grieve or are troubled by illness. You hear us when we call to you. Deliver us from the depths of our despair and free us from the worries that bind us. Merciful God. Your spirit of life dwells in our assembly. Bless the music ministries of this congregation and all who lead us in hymns of praise and thanksgiving and songs of lament and prayer. Merciful God. Hear other intercessions or prayers may be offered aloud or in the silence of your hearts. I lift up this week those suffering from flooding in California, those who have lost lives and so many material things in the tornadoes in Mississippi. Merciful God, you are the resurrection and the life. Even though we die, we will live. With thanksgiving, we remember all your saints who now live in your eternal love. Merciful God, we lift our prayers to you, O God, trusting in your steadfast love and your promise to renew your whole creation through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Let us share that with one another, and then we'll receive the offering. stand.
praise and thanks to you, holy God, for your word. You made all things. You spoke light into darkness, called forth beauty from chaos, and brought life into being. For your word of life, O God. We give you thanks and praise. By your word, you called your people Israel to tell of your wonderful gifts. Freedom from captivity, water on the desert journey, a pathway home from exile, wisdom for life with you. For your word of life, O God. We give you thanks and praise. Through Jesus, your word made flesh, you speak to us and call us to witness. Forgiveness through the cross, life to those entombed by death, the way of your self-giving love. For your word of life, O God. We give you thanks and praise. Send your spirit of truth, O God, rekindle your gifts within us, renew our faith, increase our hope, and deepen our love. For the sake of a world in need, faithful to your word, O God, draw near to all who call on you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever. Amen. Our Father, who art, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will, will be done. done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The God of steadfastness and encouragement grant you to live in harmony with one another in accordance with Christ Jesus. Amen. The God of hope fill you with all joy and peace and believing so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The God of all grace bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Thank you. 